South African women are doing it for themselves. And finally, the country has a women-owned mutual bank, Young Women in Business Network Cooperative Financial Institution. Uh, well, of course, uh, the cooperative is a deposit-taking financial cooperative registered in December 2015 in terms of the Cooperatives Bank Act uh, 40 of 2007. So now, Ntabeleng Dikozi is managing director of uh, this bank called the YWBNCFI, and we'll get to know its trading name. She joins us on the line uh, uh, via, via uh, Teams. Thank you so much. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Colin, and good afternoon to the viewers at large. All right, so uh, let's pick up from our conversation. Uh, four years ago when you told us here at the SABC that you were going to come up with a, a woman-owned bank that sounded like a pipe dream to other people when we were speaking but now we can imagine the celebration that you and the other women and at your home your parents being proud of uh, the news tell us about that so um, it's been a long journey. Um, you would remember because I was on your show uh, four years ago, uh, Colin, when it was still a, a pipe dream. Um, we registered or we submitted really our application to the South African Reserve Bank on the 15th of June 2018. And um, it has been a very life challenging uh, experience emotionally. Uh, physically, intellectually, uh, financially texting. Um, but more so because I guess the, the Reserve Bank's role is to ensure that uh, members' deposits are protected. So they needed to ensure that we are fit and proper to be in a position to establish a mutual bank. But just as much as we are establishing this mutual bank to assist uh, SMMEs or informal sector, we also were faced with a huge challenge of access to capital, which is one of the greatest uh, requirements in setting up a mutual bank. So that is the past four years has been, if you're not mentally ready for, for this process, I would say don't go for it. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, that uh, sounded like trying to find a needle in the haystack. So what has been your analysis of the financial market, uh, especially looking at, uh, you know, the convergence of uh, banking services, which have unconventional uh, banking methods, and now that the industry has transformed, you know, from your normal banking to digital banking? Yeah, so in the South African context, really, digital banking space, uh, it's still fairly young. So I would safely say from 2018, 2019, that's when the South African market kind of like transitioned into the digital space because we are used to brick and mortar. Um, so it's only this new banks that have recently been approved that have gone um, digital. So we also find that, you know, people, we talk about COVID now, uh, but COVID has, in this instance, assisted in the in financial sector, especially in the digital space, banks that offer banking products digitally. Because now, due to COVID, people now understand that you don't have to go through to a branch, whereas the other commercial banks have the legacy of the old systems, the legacy of the brick and mortar, which is infrastructure, which is extremely uh, expensive. So due to this, we believe that we are also the early adopters um, in the mutual bank space, uh, in the digital space, because it's still fairly new, uh, whereas the other traditional or the known banks are still very much on, on, on brick and mortar. And if you realize in the maybe last year, they are also trying to, they're also trying to move away from so much brick and mortar but to more digital space so that has been the analysis and we think that now the south african market understands at least now the importance of using or utilizing their cell phones not just for taking calls or texting but also for financial services products as well 
Mm. So the financial sector is male dominated and we have seen uh, right now we have moved from four uh, major banks to now uh, you know five commercial banks and of course uh, they are way ahead in as far as market capitalization is concerned. So how do you expect a female uh, bank, a female or m rather woman-owned bank uh, to succeed through its uh, market penetrative, uh, penetrative strategy in a very you know, difficult trading condition like we are now? Look, for us, the, the banking sector is definitely male-dominated. I mean, even myself as somebody who was trying to, to get the license registered, I was told um, straight up that what are you doing trying to get into the male industry? You know, stay away from it. This is an old boys club. So who are you to think that you can get a banking license? But for us, it's not really a competition between male versus female. For us, it's uh, women have not been heard in, in decision-making uh, processes, in ownership in the financial sector, in senior management positions, executives, so it's, it's, it's us saying we, as women, we have a different ear and we have different ways of doing things. So we might necessarily not do what males have been doing for so long. That is why you find that in, in a country like ours, we have more people that are underbanked and underserved as opposed to people that are already in the mainstream. So having a woman-owned bank that brings in a different woman perspective to doing things is probably going to be the best thing to ever happen to this country.